Well, good morning, y'all. I, uh, I hope you'll all honestly report who had substance today and who didn't. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to take a few questions. Regarding the Southside uh, gas scandal, that's the subject of the IG investigation, you wrote that you, uh, your office cooperated fully in discovery, but as it turns out, one of your top deputies fought very hard to keep the email secret. Which is it? Did your office cooperate or did you? Oh, no, we've certainly cooperated. If you did nothing wrong, why did you yeah. uh, try so hard to keep the email secret? Uh, I don't honestly know what email's keeping secret you're talking about, but you have legal Sir, privileges. Sir, mentioned emails. Uh, Mr. Cuccinelli, the reason why some uh, people oppose a poll is that it reduces the prejudice. Well, the nation's dependency on it is because it's contribution to global warming. What is your current position on global warming? You still say that the views don't contribute to it. Well, certainly, I, I think we've got environmental issues that we need to deal with at the national level. But when you talk about state policy, which is what I have to deal with as a potential governor candidate, um, the trade off with our economy and destroying opportunity for the poor and all the damage that does in our middle class, uh, we've got to balance that. And the current federal administration is not doing that. They're way, way out of balance. And so right now, the key for Governor of Virginia is pushing back. What's your view on global warming? My view is you have to push back on the overreach of the federal government because they are out of balance in this area. Do you believe human beings can be enormous economic destruction in this country? Mr. Taylor, to follow up on that, a report by the U.S. Geological Survey found North Virginia and Hampton Roads are one of the areas most threatened by rising sea levels as a direct result of climate change. Um, another report found that the Camping Roads area uh, could potentially be subject to $25 billion of economic damage as a result of rising sea levels from climate change. Would that, how would you address that problem? Uh, well, certainly, as I just said, I don't expect Virginia to go out on its own and hamper its economic prospects as some states have done in a destructive fashion. We at least have to compete within the United States. If our uh, federal government is going to make decisions uh, for the whole country that leave us in an equal competitive position with our other states, but then hurt our position internationally, at least we're all in it together. But I'm running for governor. I am not intending to uh, impose additional restrictions in Virginia that would cause economic damage um, to pursue these policies. We've got a ton of them coming in already from the federal level that we're struggling to absorb. But could you explain why when, after you were sworn in, we know that it's legal, but there's questions about whether it is ethical to continue with a, a private custody case after you were sworn in as attorney general? Sure. I was asked about this at the time. I was not paid for that, and I had child witnesses two weeks after I was sworn in, and I was not comfortable handing over child witnesses to another attorney. I had relationships with those children that I had developed, um, and so I did it without pay to just to finish out the case because I didn't want them to have to deal with anybody else. I want to Since ask you, you what your opponent had to, I want to ask That's about right. what your opponent had to say about that a short while ago. He said your support for fathers' rights in connection with that case uh, was another sign of your war against women. What's your response? Well, that case had nothing to do with with fathers' rights. From a policy standpoint, from my perspective, I did it because I had two child witnesses that I didn't want to hand over to anybody else. I mean, that was that was it. And, and in these cases, Julie, you take one at a time. But what so. about what Mr. McCollum had to say? Well, I, I didn't yeah. hear. Well, he so. said you, you're, you were one of three attorney generals in the country that didn't uh, support reauthorizing the Violence Against, against Women's Act. Why? Why was that? I also didn't sign the NRA's legislation because we have not. Uh, we got out of the habit pretty quickly when I was AG of signing those letters related to federal legislation. We do things on regulatory matters, we do other things, but we got out of the business of supporting either side. So yes, they point that one out. They don't point out that you know, the NRA, which has endorsed me, I didn't support their legislation either that a lot of other attorneys general did too. So that's that's all a process question. That's all it is. I'm the only candidate in this race who has a track record of protecting women, whether it was preventing sexual assault at UVA, running numerous domestic violence programs at, in the attorney general's office, uh, starting human trafficking uh, effort in Virginia from scratch where there was none and we're interdicting these rings all around Virginia now. I'm the only candidate with a positive track record in that respect. And I notice you're not taking any notes about that. 
You've received over $100,000 from Console Energy since you sided with them. Will you give that money back? Uh, I did not receive $100,000 since I sided with them. I received $100,000 in contributions since I opposed them. In, in, uh, if, if you want to give me $100,000, that's the question you answered. You asked. I am the only candidate who has proposed a solution to the gas and problem. And I've heard you say that before. If you don't have an actual question, thank you all very much.